Thank you, Anthony. That was beautiful. So whoever you are and wherever you may be on your own life's journey, you are welcome here at the Sunderland Congregational Church, a part of the United Church of Christ. And today is a very special day. Today is Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the Universal Christian Church everywhere at any time, uh, past, present, and future. It all ties in with Pentecost. Pentecost is when the Spirit descended upon those earliest believers in Jerusalem uh, they believed, they had witnessed the resurrected Jesus, but they didn't know what to do with that faith. And so they kind of hunkered down, as we'll hear in today's first reading. They hunkered down and weren't willing to share with anybody because I don't think they knew how to. They didn't know what to say. And then the Spirit comes, and all of a sudden that little house just becomes too small, and they have to burst out. And as soon as they hit the streets of Jerusalem, that is the birthday of the Christian church. So when the Spirit comes, no one knows what can happen. And in the earliest church, I want to share with you a little passage from the 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Because I think when we talk about the Spirit today, we really don't know what that actually means. You know, Jesus, we have a picture. God and heaven, we have a little bit of a picture. But the Spirit, what is the Spirit? And so sometimes we think of it as almost just like a Bible study kind of thing for tomorrow night. Or we might think of it as some of these churches where, you know, there's a lot of hand waving and all of that. But, you know, the Spirit is right here, right now. And, and I want to share what the earliest church experienced as the Spirit and kind of help us to realize um, maybe we could use a little bit more. So this is Paul writing to the Corinthians. He's their pastor. And so this church in Corinth, he says, What should be done then, my friends? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All the people in the church are, are wanting to say something, to participate somehow. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there be only two, or maybe three at most, and each in turn. So all these people are trying to say something, and Paul says, hey, calm down. The Spirit is all out there, but calm down. We'll all have our turn. And then let them be silent in church and speak to themselves if you have this tongue, because maybe if there's more than two or three, just keep it to yourselves. Maybe next Sunday we'll do it again. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what has been said. Imagine on a given Sunday, two or three prophets speak and then just listen to what they said. 
And if a revelation is made to someone else sitting nearby, let the first one be silent. So that somebody is speaking, all of a sudden the Spirit touches somebody else. I have something to add. The first one is supposed to quiet down. Let the second one speak. Another revelation, someone else adds this. And this is Paul talking to this church in Corinth. For can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn, all may be encouraged. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. So this idea of the, of the Spirit it was a tangible force. When it came and it made itself present, it was as of the color red, tongues as a fire. It was a violent wind. It wasn't a breeze with the dove just kind of gently descending. It was a violent experience. It was a cha- life-changing experience. And I don't know if we still think of Pentecost that way. I don't know if we think of church that way, that the church is a life-changing force. And so I didn't want to save that for the sermon at the end of the worship. I wanted you to be aware of that throughout the worship on this Pentecost Sunday. So as we come together as church, this is a place where that that barrier between heaven and earth is thin. This is a place where the Spirit is, and we have to open ourselves to the Spirit and be ready to accept the Spirit. So in the Spirit's name, Let us now turn to our opening hymn in candle lighting to open ourselves to all that God would have us do. The church's one foundation, red hymnal number 260. turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. The day of Pentecost has arrived and we are together. Will we let the works of God be known among us and through us today? The 
Spirit descends upon us as a gentle breath or as a violent wind. We are inspired to live our faith more deeply and openly. The Spirit stirs our souls to give us hope. The Spirit leads us to each other and gives voice to a passionate faith. The fires of Pentecost drive us to imagine and to create. They energize us to dream dreams and to build up the house of God. The Spirit is the breath of God. Now, coming together as this congregation in person, those joining us via Zoom and later through FCAT, our unison prayer. Amazing God, how manifold are your works. You breathed upon the primordial waters and gave life to creation. You breathed your very spirit upon the apostles and the church was born. Your life-giving presence links us all to one another. Come among us now to renew our souls to excite our faith, and to direct our efforts. Inspire us to move beyond the confines of what was and is, so that we may become apostles of what should be. Reveal your visions for the world and for the church, and give us the confidence to make them real. Help us to preach boldly, so that the church challenges us as believers and confronts the world with the gospel's alternative. Today, the church was born and is reborn. May the Pentecost spirit pervade our worship this day and always. Amen. God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here she comes. Okay. You want to come on up here today? Ah, there we go. How are you today? I walked into church and she handed me a dollar. There you go. <laughs> that's, a bal- that's a balloon. Yeah, it's a balloon. We're going to talk about balloons today because today is Pentecost. Can, can she have a balloon? or would, yeah. yeah, okay. Hold on. I got a balloon. I just wasn't sure. I didn't want to have... Now, I'll even let you... I got a blue one or a yellow one or a purple one. What color would you like? A yellow one? There you go. Now, don't swallow that, whatever you do. <laughs> okay. So, on Pentecost, we talk about the breath of God, the Spirit of God. It's actually the same word. And so on Pentecost, all of these people, they knew about Jesus, but they weren't saying anything. They weren't speaking anything. They weren't breathing God out into the world. And so you got a balloon, but this isn't a very exciting balloon like this, right? Kind of boring? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it is. And so what God does is God blows some breath into the church. And the balloon starts to look like a balloon. Yeah. You, you, oh, Grandma's going to do it for you. Yeah. See? And now we both got balloons. All right. Oh, oh. And so then, all of the, when the Spirit comes down, these people who now have got the Spirit, they're sitting in a house, and they said, I can't just stay in the house. i got to go outside and tell other people about the Spirit. And so God breathed some more into them. <sighs> And now there's more people, they rush out into the streets and they start telling everybody about God. And the amazing thing is, this is going over so well. (laughs) And the amazing thing is, is that when God is already out there, he prepares the people to hear what is being said. So now the spirit is even bigger. And now (sighs) there's more breath of God. And the cool thing about this, though, The cool thing about this is that when the Spirit comes, it says it's like a storm, a violent wind. And you can't tell tell the Spirit what to do. So you know what we're going to do? Oh, there you go. A little bit of breath of God. We're going to let it go. And you know when we let it go? We don't know where it's going to go. And that's just like the Spirit. When we let the Spirit, the breath of God, go, we have no idea what's going to happen. And that's like we have to follow. We don't tell the Spirit what we do. We're going to follow. So watch this. You ready, Sakor? You can do the same with yours, too, if you want. There it goes. Whoa! And so we didn't know where that was going to go. Whoa! Whoa, very cool. All right, so we don't know where the Spirit's going to go, and that's why we didn't know where the balloon was going to go, because it's the breath of God. So happy Pentecost today, okay? Yes. I, I don't know what you said, but yes. Yes. Yeah. We'll back up. Okay. Exactly. All right. Have a good one, Sakura. A few more years, I won't be able to get up from that. All right, and today... The anthem is, On Pentecost They Gathered.
Now time for us to share our joys, our celebrations, and our concerns. And the church was born on Pentecost, and our prayer is that the church may be reborn on this Pentecost Sunday. May the Spirit fill this gathering and lead us to do what God would have us do. Moving from that world of Pentecost to the world outside, we offer our prayers for Ukraine and also for those affected by war between Israel and Hamas. We pray for peace somehow in these war-torn areas. We also continue to pray for our nation as we face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. And also, um, we offer prayers um, for everyone um, in our town that is uh, going through any kind of hardship at, at the moment. Um, there's a special meeting tomorrow of the Sunderland Human Rights Task Force and even in our small town, sometimes anger can uh, boil to the surface, and so we pray for healing in uh, these special ways and for all of our town people. Uh, are there any other prayers, joys, celebrations that, yes? concerns? All right, let us turn to our yellow sheet and offer our prayers for these. Let us pray for Alan, Alice, Amy, and Tom, 
Antonia and family, Angie, Art, Bill, Bill, Bonnie, Chris and family, Cheryl, Cindy, Edna, Frank, Grayson, Jeff, Jim, John, John, Kathy, Leslie, Lindy, Liz, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane and Joe, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Sandra, Sandra and John, Steve, Stephen, Virginia and Richard, Wink, the family of Brenda W., victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And at this time, in the midst of our public worship, can we just turn inward for a few moments of silence and say those prayers to God that we can't say out loud but are just as meaningful and just as recognized in heaven. So just a few moments of silence. Spirit of truth, come among us to guide us in the footsteps of Jesus. Amaze and astonish us with the gifts that are already present here among us. Awaken us to the wind and the tongues of fire, waiting to fill us with new life and vigorous hope. May our meditations be pleasing to you and our service to others be truly helpful so that your great and glorious day may be realized in our midst. And we ask that you hear the prayers that we have offered you today, answering them as you alone know best. And may we now also add to those prayers the prayer that Jesus himself gave to all of us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God provides for us in due season opening a kind and loving hand to fill us with good things. The face of the ground is continually renewed each year so that we may reap its bounty. And likewise, our spirits are renewed each Pentecost Sunday as we focus on the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit both within and among us all. Our offerings are expressions of gratitude for the practical and the spiritual gifts that God grants us always. Therefore, may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow, and donations can be accepted now, or if you're not with us in person, they can always be mailed to the church. However you choose to donate, it is appreciated.
accept, O Lord, these offerings, now replaced here in your sanctuary, as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. We'll soon hear in the gospel that Jesus says, I have other things to tell you, but you are not yet prepared to hear them. That's a message of continuing revelation, that God speaks to us as we are capable of hearing, which is another Pentecost message. And so the church is a continuing revelation of God that changes because we change, and God is leading us somewhere. So for all that we do, whether it be through the work of the church or donations to the church, being here as church, whatever we do so that God can continue to reveal himself and lead us to where God would have us go. Thank you for that work. Thank you for those donations. And may God bless you and may God bless these gifts so we may continue to share God with the people of our community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And our reflecting hymn today is Red Hymn number 242, Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. Today's gospel is taken from John chapter 15, verses 26 through 27, and then chapter 16, verses 4 through 15. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you, so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. 
He will glorify me because he will take from me what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. And for this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So there are no more red, uh, Red Cross bloodmobiles up in our area anymore, and I don't know why. I'm assuming it has something to do with finances. It just must not make financial sense for them to come up here. But I don't know where they get their blood. So I used to donate on a regular basis, which used to be like every two months. Uh, But without the Red Cross, now I only donate twice a year because that's when the Kraft Family Bloodmobile comes over to Cooley Dickinson. And so instead of every two months, now it's only twice a year. And so even though it's only twice a year, I I started to recognize the faces of the employees on the blood mobile. Um, They must send just basically the same crew from Boston out here, and they come to Cooley Dickinson, they spend the day, I think they're there from like 8 to 6 or 7 at night, and it looks like the same people. And you know, that's not really uh, that strange. There's like about 10 people, so for me to recognize them is not out of the ordinary. But they let on that they also recognize us, the regular donors, even though regular donors are only every six months. And, you know, there's only 10 of them, but there must be literally hundreds of us who come through. You figure from 8 until 6 or 7 at night. There's got to be literally hundreds of us. They only see us every six months, but they recognize us. And so one of the workers on the bloodmobile told me that they give us nicknames. And so, you know, they, uh, they don't recognize you by your blood type, even though they're taking blood. I think it's kind of cool that as a pastor, my blood type is B positive. So I thought that was kind of cool, B positive. Uh, but the other thing is they don't recognize you by your name. Uh, you know, because with the protocol of giving blood, they ask your name, and then they re-ask, and then they ask again. So they, they should have your name down pat after all that. But they give us nicknames, I found out, from one of the workers there, the one who's, you know, taking my blood. And she said, my nickname on the bloodmobile is Socks. And so I'm Socks, because when you're sitting in that, that bed, your pant leg pulls up. And as your pant leg pulls up, you have, I have a tendency to wear loud socks. And so on that day, I had yellow socks with blue ducks. Today, my, my, my socks are orange with blue zebras. And so when you've got loud socks, and they, they, they're, they're looking right at your socks as you're taking blood, I become Socks. So when I was leaving, they didn't say, bye, be positive. They didn't say, bye, Randy. They said, see you in six months, you know, socks. And so I became socks because this is what defines me. You know, this is what I look like to them, socks. And I think that's important on Pentecost Sunday. Because Pentecost, as I mentioned, is the birthday of the entire church. Um, Whatever kind of church you belong to, this is its birthday. When When the Holy Spirit descends upon those first human believers in Jesus, and they continue to do what Jesus did in his life and ministry, and they rush out of that house, and they start to talk about Jesus, and they start to proclaim Jesus, that's the birthday of the church, and it doesn't matter what denomination you are, how you express that faith, how you experience that faith, it don't matter at all. We are all Pentecost churches. And so that idea of the Pentecost church, you know, maybe you remember from last Sunday, there was a lot of believers in Jerusalem. Um, you know, we had that number of 120, which may be 12 times 10, which is fullness times multitude. And so there could be a lot of believers. Uh, But they're gathered together, they're hunkered down in one house, like a compound, like a sect. You know, they know that Jesus resurrected, so they have faith in Jesus. Um, They know that Jesus came back from the dead, but they don't know what to do with that faith. Um, I almost think it's like they think that he came back for them. Not for everybody else, but for them. And so they hunker down in this house. And you know, you all remember the story of John the Baptist. John the Baptist is the one who goes out into the wilderness. He hunkers down in the wilderness. And he, he's out there and he's figuring, we're the ones who are saved and everybody else, too bad for you. We're all right, too bad for you. And Jesus is way up in Galilee. He's a carpenter. He can't figure out what's going on. And so he travels from Galilee. He comes down to John out there in the wilderness. Maybe John hunkered down in the wilderness. Maybe he's got the answers. And Jesus even is baptized by John, this idea of let's, you know, hunker down here and too bad for you. And so Jesus gets that baptism of John the Baptist. He even driven further out to the wilderness. And there he's absolutely alone. And that's where he rejects that whole idea of us 
versus them, that I can be okay, but it doesn't matter what happens to them. So he leaves the wilderness, and he comes out. He comes rushing out of the wilderness, and he goes and he speaks to anybody and everybody. He, instead of hunkering down in the wilderness, he goes into the communities, the villages of Galilee, and he'll talk to anybody about God, and he looks for and he seeks out the ones who are pushed aside, the, for, the forgotten ones, the unseen ones. He goes to them. So Jesus is the rejection of that John the Baptist um, image of us versus them. But the earliest church, they're like John the Baptist. They're hunkered down in a house us is good. You are bad. The Holy Spirit is going to come for us. Too bad for you. And then Holy Spirit, uh, the whole, I'm sorry, and then Pentecost happens. The Holy Spirit descends. And I think their first reaction must have been, I knew this was going to happen. I knew God was coming back for us. And so they feel the Holy Spirit descend. They feel that power. You know, it's that rushing, violent wind. It's a spiritual storm. The tongues as a fire. You know, fire for the ancients. It's like, a, like an oven for a baker. It's like a forge for a blacksmith. You know, it's, it's, what goes in doesn't come out the same. And so all of a sudden they're saying, oh, this is what we've been waiting for. We're going to heaven. Too bad for you guys. Too late. And then all of a sudden they're changed. The Holy Spirit transforms them. They're born and reborn. And all of a sudden, that little house just wasn't enough for them. They couldn't stand being confined inside. And they go rushing out into the streets of Jerusalem. They're just amazed. We're new people. We're we're new. We're going to share Jesus with everybody. And they go out there amazed at who they have become. And then they're amazed that the Spirit beat them out the door. The Spirit is already out on the streets of Jerusalem. Listen real attentively to that chapter 2 story that we just heard this morning from the Pentecost story. They rush out. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. They start talking about Jesus, yelling about Jesus, sharing Jesus with anybody who will listen. And all these people from all over the Roman world are coming to Jerusalem for the Jewish feast of Pentecost to go to the temple. They're from everywhere speaking all these different languages, coming from all these different areas. They all come together and everybody hears the gospel. And so at 9 o'clock in the morning, some people hear the gospel proclamation. They hear the word of God, and others are hearing gibberish. They're saying these people are drunk. And Peter has to say it's only 9 in the morning. It may be a great day, but they're not drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. And so the idea is, is they're not all, these are Gentile Galilean fishermen. They don't know, you know, Greek and Latin. They don't know how to speak to people from the island of Crete and then the, uh, the land of Libya. They don't know all these different languages. And God doesn't let, you know, well, you talk to the Greeks and you talk to... No, it's this idea of this tongues. So they all go out and some only hear drunken gibberish. Like these people are drunk. They're talking nonsense. And others, though, in that same gibberish, they hear the word of God. That means that God has inspired the preachers to preach the word of God. And God has inspired the other ones to hear the word of God. So before the apostles could even get out the door of that house, the Spirit was already there preparing them to receive the word of God. So when we let that little balloon go and it went who knows where, that's what the, you don't control the spirit. You don't control, you know, where a storm is going to go. You're having a picnic on some Sunday at your house, and you tell the storm you can go to the house over there, the house over there, you can't come to my house. It doesn't work like that. And the same thing with the spirit. You don't tell the spirit where to go. You follow where the spirit goes. So today is Pentecost. Today is the birthday of the church in all of its different ways and all of its different denominations. And so Peter goes out there and he starts to quote from Isaiah. He's amazed. I've changed and all these people have changed. And he says, I goes back to that prophet Isaiah. He says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God goes to everybody. And then he continues and he says, men and women will prophesy. 2,000 years ago, there was a strict distinction between what a man could do and what a woman could do and you did not cross those lines there was no gender bender there was no job to st- i mean there was no you know like i don't want to be a, a stay-at-home mom but i want the stay-at-home dad well there's no you don't do those are not choices you do what you're told to do but in the spirit there will be neither men nor women all will prophesy so all the distinctions that we think are so important god says they don't really matter to me And so the Spirit is given to everyone. And then he continues as he's amazed at all these people who've received the Spirit. He says, your young men and your old men will dream dreams. Okay, they'll see visions, they'll dream dreams. 
The world is a harsh place a lot of times. There's a lot of times where the world simply won't let us dream dreams and have visions. It steals it away, whether it's through poverty or ignorance, or whether it be through war or prejudice. We just aren't allowed to dream dreams and to see visions. And the Holy Spirit comes down and it lets us dream and hope about a better tomorrow. And then it even says, even your slaves will receive the Spirit. So when God comes down, these people who owned other people, they thought they were no more than like another piece of my property. I can do with that property whatever I want to. The Spirit comes down. It comes down upon master and slave. And all of these people are included in that new world that God establishes. This is the world that Pentecost talks about. This is the world not only for these beautiful sanctuary buildings. This is the world that we have to rush out and share because the world needs to hear that. And just like, you know, it was my socks that stuck out as me. This is who Randy Calvo is. He's the sock donor. We need to be able to represent church, the Pentecost church, through what we say, what we don't say, what we do, what we don't do, so that other people will know, not just by looking to see our cars in the parking lot or our bikes in the parking lot. They'll know that we are church people and Pentecost people because of who we are. They'll recognize us just like they recognize my socks. They'll see in us that we have been touched by the Spirit. And that has to be as real today as it was when we started off the service and I read from Paul, the pastor, talking to that Corinthian church 2,000 years ago. It has to make a difference if it's real. If we only think about this as something from 2,000 years ago and not today, if we only think it changed people 2,000 years ago and cannot change me today, then Pentecost has died. We have to allow the Spirit to be the Spirit in the way that the Spirit chooses, and we need to follow. So for these things we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. And today's closing hymn is, very appropriately, blue number 595, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Thank you for coming out and worshiping on this Pentecost Sunday, and may that spirit that is here, may it stay with us and remain with us and influence us throughout the week ahead so that we may share the church with others. 
Let us now share in our benediction response and then go our separate ways. God's Spirit is poured out on the church. We carry it with us into everyday world. We are filled with hope as God enters our souls and our community to let us dream dreams and to see visions of better tomorrows. The Spirit will help us in our weakness and give us courage. We will be guided in what to say and the gospel will be able to grow loud through us. Our faith will be practiced in worship and in service. The very breath of God will enliven us, and the mystery of Pentecost will propel us into the world. So let us go forth to love and serve the Lord in all we do, among all we may meet. Amen. Amen.